Lowering cholesterol is crucial for health and longevity, but unfortunately most people they aren't getting this right. So what is cholesterol? How and why do we lower it? And can we lower cholesterol too much? For patients that are completely new to cholesterol, I explain to them that cholesterol makes the blood sticky and that leads to blockages in the blood vessels, leading to heart attacks and strokes. So if we lower cholesterol, we lower the chance of heart attacks and strokes. But let's take a far more advanced look and really dive into detail to understand the optimal cholesterol strategy for longevity. The first thing to understand is that cholesterol is essential for life. It's a crucial part for our cell membranes. It gets changed into hormones such as testosterone. It's crucial for bile production so that we can absorb fat. And the list goes on. In short, no cholesterol equals no life. Now, we've known for decades that every cell in the human body can produce its own cholesterol. And organs such as the liver can produce extra cholesterol and export it to other cells that need a temporary top up. Which means we need a transportation system to move that cholesterol from from the liver and primarily it's transported via the bloodstream. Now this is a problem. Blood is primarily water and cholesterol repels water. Think of trying to mix water with oil. It doesn't work and they separate out. So the body needs to package up the cholesterol into a vehicle so that it can be transported in the blood. That vehicle is a spherical ball called a lipoprotein with the cholesterol in the middle and the lipoprotein creating a protective layer. The outside layer can mix well with water so now we can transport it in the blood around the body. But it's during this transport that some of the cholesterol gets dumped into the blood vessel walls, leading to blockages. So which cholesterol vehicles or lipoproteins do we need to worry about? Well, a broad simplification is that every lipoprotein has got an either ApoA tag or an ApoB tag. ApoA attaches itself to high density lipoprotein or HDL. We're going to leave this to one side because if it's to alter ApoA or HDL cholesterol, they've largely failed in terms of reducing heart attack rates. Instead, we're going to focus on the ApoB family because it's here where the problems begin. ApoB attaches itself to LP little a, LDL, IDL, and VDL. So what am I talking about here when I mention these acronyms? LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. What this is referring to is the density of the cholesterol that's packaged into that lipoprotein vehicle. But overall, the key takeaway here is that all lipoproteins that have got the ApoB tag, they can get dumped into the blood vessel walls. And I do mean all of them. So you may have heard other people talking about small dense LDL, that that is the crucial one and we can ignore the rest. That's incorrect. Again, all types of lipoproteins that have got the ApoB tag can get into the blood vessel wall. We need to worry about all of them because when we do lower ApoB or LDL cholesterol, we reduce the buildup of blockages in the blood vessels and reduce heart attacks. This part is crucial. When we do a blood test for cholesterol levels, we are only measuring the cholesterol that's being transported in the blood. It's only a tiny fraction of the body's total cholesterol. And so far, after the decades of research that we've got on cholesterol, the European Society of Cardiology recommends that LDL cholesterol levels should be lowered as much as possible to prevent cardiovascular disease. Disease, and this is a sentiment that's echoed by the American Heart Association. Remember, all human cells can produce their own cholesterol, so we only need a tiny amount that's being transported in the blood, and the human studies prove this. So what can we do to lower ApoB lipoproteins? We start with exercise. We've got fantastic data showing that regular exercise can reduce cholesterol, and it does result in lower heart attack rates. The next is diet. We can see that a healthy diet that's got lots of fiber and low saturated fat can reduce LDL cholesterol by about 17%. Now, no single diet is perfect for everyone. So if you've found a diet that works for you, that is brilliant. But if I had to choose one diet, I'd go for the Mediterranean diet. This is the diet that's got the best evidence for preventing major cardiovascular events. But regardless of which diet you choose, we want to make sure that it's low in saturated fat. And the evidence for this is from a Cochrane review that was published in 2020. It showed that by reducing saturated fat intake, we can reduce the chance of heart disease by 21%. We also want to make sure that the diet is high in fiber. Again, from a Cochrane review, we can see that we can lower cholesterol and LDL cholesterol with increased fiber intake. Okay, so we're using exercise and diet to lower ApoB lipoproteins. But what if we want to take it a step further? How low do we want ApoB lipoproteins to give us the best protection against heart attacks and strokes? Which brings us to another interesting question. Can blood cholesterol or ApoB levels get too low? To answer this, I want to emphasize again that the blood cholesterol levels is only a tiny fraction of the body's total cholesterol. 
all we're measuring is the amount of cholesterol that's being transported. That's an important distinction because as far as the human clinical studies go, there doesn't seem to be a limit for how low we can bring our ApoB levels. For example, when we use a class of medication called statins to bring down our blood cholesterol levels, contrary to all of the noise that's on social media that's based on outdated data, this strategy is very safe. The rates of muscle aches are almost the same, there's no association with cognitive impairment, and it actually looks like statins may help protect against cognitive decline, and they do not affect male testosterone levels. The one study that's often mentioned by people that refute the idea of lowering LDL cholesterol or ApoB lipoproteins is this one. In 2020, an observational study of over 100,000 people showed that low levels of LDL cholesterol seem to be associated with an increase increased risk of death. So if LDL cholesterol is bad, surely a lower level should reduce death rates, but that's not what the study showed. What's going on here? This can be explained by reverse causation. So debilitation and illness, they do cause a decrease in cholesterol levels. And in the study, the people that had other sicknesses, they had lower levels of LDL cholesterol. So instead, the data that we should be looking at is interventional studies, as in what happens when we purposely make a change to lower cholesterol levels. And in those studies, we see lower heart attack rates and lower death rates. So what's the best ApoB level? Well, this is what Dr. Peter Atia had to say. You want ApoB to be as close to the level as it was when you were born. So we start developing heart disease when we're born. That's just the way it is. Um, the autopsy studies make this abundantly clear. Tell me you yeah. want to live to be 100, mm -hmm. you're going to need to keep your ApoB below 30 milligrams per deciliter. That's a really low number, and I 100% agree with it. There's no known risks for bringing ApoB levels down as low as possible. And unfortunately, diet and exercise alone are not going to get us to this target. So for patients that I see in the clinic who want to do everything that they can to live over 100 and live healthily, then I talk with them about cholesterol-lowering medications including statins, ezetimibe, and PCSK9 inhibitors. I also want to emphasize that it's not just cholesterol that we need to worry about for our blood vessel health. We need to control blood sugar levels, blood pressure, stress, minimal amounts of alcohol, and no smoking. It's not just one factor that contributes to poor blood vessel health. It's many, and we need to address all of them. Now I want to address some myths that I often see in my YouTube comment sections. As a long-time keto person, my LDL is very high, but my HDL is also high and triglycerides are low, so I assume that I'm fine. It depends what your goals are. If you're trying to reach over 100 years of age and do that healthily, then you're probably not on the optimal strategy. We want to try and reduce LDL cholesterol and ApoB. The next comment says that there's two types of LDL, and it's the small dense LDL that's dangerous. This is incorrect. Like we've gone through, all of the lipoproteins that have got the ApoB tag can get into the blood vessel walls. This includes all types of LDL, so we need to address all of it. The next comment addresses statin side effects, where they say, I've tried four different statins and always experienced side effects. I have genetically high cholesterol, but my coronary calcium scan is zero. So that's awesome to hear that your scan shows that there's no calcium buildup. But just keep in mind that the coronary artery calcium scores, they can't measure non-calcified plaque. You might want to consider other types of cholesterol-lowering medications, such as azetamibe or PCSK9 inhibitors. The next one says statins don't really make a difference to cholesterol, and they shut off the CoQ10 pathway. There are multiple human studies showing that statins, they do robustly reduce blood cholesterol levels. This also matches my clinical practice, where when I prescribe a statin to a patient, I can see significant reductions in their cholesterol levels. There's also been multiple studies looking at CoQ10 supplementation with statins, and there's no benefits seen. If you want to further your knowledge about how to stay healthy, make sure to check out this next video here, where I go through a human study looking at NAC and glycine supplements. A big thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization and to benefit from the ingredients as well as a 10% discount code, check out the pinned comment.